ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I'm your host today with an I, not a Y, do not X, Y. And today we are joined by somebody you might have seen recently, whether on YouTube or your social media platforms, because she's kind of been going viral after being featured on one of those uh, Pop the Balloon for Love episodes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by multifaceted entrepreneur, master of beauty. Hey, everyone. What's up? What's up? <laughs> How are you? I can't complain even if I wanted to. I like that. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a steal that. That's a good sign. Just give me a percentage for that. If it okay. goes, you know. Oh, like if it, if it, if it gets If other people start using monetized, it, that means, yeah. yeah. Yeah, There you go. You got to copy. You got, what is it? Trademark it? Copyright it? Yeah, copy not, it? Whatever. Right. It's one of those two. Intellectual property. That's all it comes down to. So Master of Beauty, Mob. You said people know you by Mob. Where did that name come from? Master Beauty. Yeah, and where did that come from? Um, it came from when I was in beauty school. Like mm -hmm. when I was trying to brand myself, I, you know, I was like, I gotta figure out a way to make myself stand out mm -hmm. from everybody. I gotta figure out how to take my brand, but it also can, you know, be a wide range of things. Mm -hmm. So Mob was like, okay, dudes can relate to it, females can relate to it, and it was kind of edgy. So you know, if you're thinking Mob, you're thinking people. Anytime I tell them Mob, they think. So many different things other than right. master of beauty. So right. for me, it was just like I can brand it in many different ways, but yeah. it still comes back to who is mob, what is master, you know. And then when right. I tell a master of beauty, now I started a conversation with you because right. now I'm going to tell you about my brand, what I do, and how I came up with that. So mm -hmm. it was just like it's a good catcher, like it catches yeah, there you people's go. It's a good attention. catcher, and then yeah. I um I use that everywhere. Like I said, I used to um actually have hats like mob hats. Uh -huh. And dudes will buy it because, right. you know, just because I cater to women, I'm like, guys will be like, well, you know, how can I support you? Or can right. you do my hair? They don't have hair or anything. Right. Buy my hat. Yeah. So. It just said MOB, mob. Because usually we think mob, MOB, money over money, bitches. Yeah, exactly. Right, money, right. I always get money over bitches. This is another one. Um, I had a guy, I guess he was in the military and uh -huh. he, stand, he stood for something. Uh -huh. And he stopped me. He was like. You know, you're just a pretty girl. He was like, but you got a mob hat on. He was like, a mob and I don't know what it meant. He was just like, I just thought, and I had uh -huh. an army fatigue hat too. Uh, he was so like, he really you know, it, it, was... it stands for something. I was like, no. He was like, so why you have that on? Mm -hmm. Um, and I told him, I said, yeah. it's my business. Um, right. it stands for Master of Beauty. Yeah. We started a conversation. Boom. Oh, white man, you know, Boom. we started That's a conversation. What I'm so. Yeah, it's a it's a good attention catcher. You said earlier you used to did you say you said security in a club, work in a club? What did you say? <laughs> Said nah, 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 nah. I, I forgot what you said, but it says something. Now, I um, I used to do hair and makeup in a club. I used to uh -huh. um do hair and makeup at Onyx. Really? And, the one um, out here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've been to Onyx once since I've been out here. It was I, dope. It was dope. So you did hair at Onyx like in the back? Yeah, in the back. I did um the girl's hair and makeup. Yeah. Did yeah. you did you ever yourself like consider like uh no. Nah. Nah? I mean, some days I would look at it, but you know, not consider it just because I just—it's not my thing. I'm too, mm -hmm. I'm too aggressive, mm -hmm. and I think in you know that world you gotta kind of sell a dream. So yeah, I'm I'm the type of person like nigga, don't fucking touch me, you know. Oh, was that? <laughs> like, I was already asked. What do you mean by you're aggressive? Like I don't like. I feel like you know it. It takes a lot of work to be you know um, an entertainer. Mm. Like that type of entertainer, you know, and I feel like that's why some some of the girls kind of you know result to drugs, do whatever. But is me, stripper a bad word? Is that what you're saying? Like, do they not? No, like I just stripper? I just didn't. Is it like a respect thing? Yeah, it's a respect thing. Okay, like, and it's funny because I almost wore a, a shirt that had something on that, but I didn't. Um, yeah. I was like, let me just brand myself. Uh -huh. But um, I'm trying to. I don't. Could you date a male stripper? Hell no. Why not? <laughs> Hell no. Um, I don't consider like I think it was just it would have been too much for me. Mm. And I like a confident man. And I think, you know, for you to be a male stripper, you're very confident in yourself and you know like so you gotta be confident. You should yeah, you, in front of But you also chicks. know you can get women, you know what I'm saying? Without oh sorry, without trying. Mm. But Nah. 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 All right. I understand. Well, we can flip it. A lot of people, you know, like to ask guys if we would date a stripper. Yeah. Me personally, I wouldn't date one. I wouldn't make one my girlfriend, but I'm cool with strippers. Like, yeah. I'm, I have a few good friends who are strippers. 
and they're cool as hell. I don't have yeah, I don't have nothing against um you know they're dancers. Honestly, like, I've dope worked with people. them. Yeah, yeah like they're they ha- very. You have to have a good personality as a stripper. They, to be honest with you, the dancers I've known in my past life mm-hmm. have been the ones that always looked out for me more mm-hmm. than a regular person. Like they're very caring. They're you know, yeah. I think people perceive them in a you know wrong light just yeah. because of their career path. They're just trying to make a living. Yeah. It's just like, you know, if you see um a prostitute. Mm-hmm. They they love the hoes. That's one of my that's one of my <laughs> Oh, that's one of, one of my, your yeah, things. Yeah, one of my tags. They they love the hoes. You love the hoes. I do. Not saying What do you love about the hoes? That they're themselves. They're, oh, that's, okay. That's why yeah, I love they the are hoes. themselves. They're yeah. not trying hard to be something else. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, would you rather be a paid hoe or a free hoe? Mm-hmm. That's how I kind of look at it, you yeah. know, and I guess just being in that industry, um, I looked at it as these women are just trying to pay their bills. Yeah. You got females out here doing it for free. Or, or doing it for money, but then shitting on actual prostitutes. And that's why I say I love the hoes and I love women that live in their truths. Yeah. Because you'll have women that do the exact same thing, but then bash, bash the girl. a stripper, bash and, a and prostitute. And that's what I feel like, you know, I can kind of, re- not relate, but I can kind of stand up for them mm-hmm. just because I've been in that world. I work with these girls and, mm-hmm. you know, I've actually, I'm friends with some of them, like mm-hmm. real good friends, yeah. you know, like. Yeah. So it's just like, I see a different light yeah. of them. You know, I see a different person. Yeah. Like your work is your work. You know, if I go to work, I'm not, I'm going to act a certain way. If right. I'm in a professional office, I'm going to act a certain way. If I'm right. home, I'm ratchet as hell. Yeah. It's like you turn it on and off. Yeah. And that's how I feel like how they do it. You know, that's why I say I could have never be one because mm-hmm. I don't know how to turn my personality off. Gotcha. Like I'm mean to dudes. So I probably wouldn't make no money. I might make yeah. money because of my looks. But as soon as you, you know a guy comes sideways, because some like, guys do disrespect you in the strip club. Yeah, yeah. they will disrespect you. They uh-huh. will like literally, you know, they because they feel like they throw money at you. They feel like they can touch you a certain way, say certain things to you. So, yeah, my personality just wouldn't do that. Like mm-hmm. I don't care how much money you give me. Like I'm about to fight you. Yeah, <laughs> like and that's just me. So I personally can't do it. Mm-hmm. But I see, you know, why girls do it, and I, I have so much respect for them. Now, am I for that? No, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like. I don't, I'm not going to judge nobody because we all sin differently. You know what right. I'm saying? I'm not perfect, but I'm not here to judge anybody. But yeah. no, I wouldn't do it. Let's rewind a bit. You said you're mean to dudes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good, that was a good monologue you had. But what really stood out was you said you listen too to, much. Yeah. You said you're mean to dudes. I got to stop talking. I told you I talk a lot, but and I'm, you I'm listen. A good listener. Okay. So I'm going to watch what I say. Nah, please, please. <laughs> That's why we're here. Why is that? And where did that come from? Um, I don't know. You know, sometimes people might call it like a defense mechanism, but I, I don't know. Niggas, I mean, I don't mean to say niggas, but it's cool. dudes just kind of, it's annoying to me. Like, and I think it's because if you're used to attention, you don't, and people might think a negative way of it. I don't like attention. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I don't like. A certain type of attention. Yes, I don't like certain types of attention because I feel like, you know, most guys will approach you just off of lust. Uh And then they look at me and my appearance and it's just like, you're not even trying to get to know me really and truly, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's like, to me, I'm more than just a body and a face, Mm -hmm. you know, but I can sit here and talk to you about aliens, but you won't know that because you're already coming at me in a negative, you know, way or just trying to lust off of me. It's just the negative comments like guys would make. So I guess for me, I kind of took it as if I'm mean to them, they'll leave me alone. But for some reason, it turns them on. And I'm like, yes. why are you turned on? And That's... I'm like, okay. But then people are like, you got to, you know, be nice to them. I'm like, no, because if I'm nice to them, they're going to keep going because they think I like them. So, so what do you do? What's the middle ground? It's no win. You just ignore them? We just... Yeah, I block. <laughs> I'm a black person. <laughs> Just act I like we don't, block you all the way. don't exist. Like we're yeah, no, invisible. I will. I literally invisible as hell. Like. So what if you do that to a guy? Okay, well, what can <laughs> what can get a guy to even get past that first wall? Is it looks? If he approaches the right way, because I I correct me if I'm wrong. It's probably a guy you weren't attracted to. He may have came at you correct, but you yeah. weren't attracted to him. You still put up that wall. No, I won't. Um, I'll friend zone them. Okay. I I friend zone guys a lot. Like yeah. I. Cause I'm cool with guys and I mm. feel like I can connect, you know, I can connect with you. And I'm, I'm also 
always in a business mind. So I'm like, okay, how can I network? If you're talking to me, we're talking about something, we you know have a conversation. To you, you might have approached me and uh, oh, I'm trying to see what's up or whatever. And I'm now, like, no. You, ha you have a lot of guys in the friend zone. One to ten, like percentage, whatever. How many of those guys try to escape the friend zone? Is it often? All ten. Yeah, <laughs> ten. all ten. Yeah. yeah, they always do. Um, it's never not like where they're not. They kind of always kind of try to sneak it in. But it, I feel like because they have so much respect for me after you know after a while, they just know me. Like mm -hmm. they kind of do it in a slick way. You know, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, no. Nah, I, I, I don't. I friend zone, and I just think. Because I don't see myself with certain guys, and I could be your homie all day. Mm -hmm. I could be your homie, but when it, I'm, I'm, I'm a different person with relationships. So, listen, man, like attract, like being in a friend zone with an attractive woman. Like I, this is my personal opinion. I, I've done it. I can do it, but I don't think a lot of guys. Majority of times, yeah. whether it's been me or her that tried to make the move, it didn't last. Yeah, it no, it well, mine's do last. But you just said they try. They try, but that. But, I'm talking about not trying. But it's called trying. boundaries, though. Yeah, I'm no. I'm saying not. I'm saying nobody trying. I'm saying a friend zone, like a what is it, non plutonic, plutonic, whatever it is, where nobody tries. That's a rarity. You yeah. said ten out of ten they try. Yeah, they try. Yeah. So do you think there can really be? And we're talking about two people who are attractive, right? You're an attractive woman. It's a guy who's attractive. Like you say, he's attractive, but he's not necessarily my type. Let me friend zone him. Do you think the whole way through that can really stay in the friend zone? Or do you think at some point somebody's going to try something? I don't know. It depends. On what? <laughs> the circumstance, I think. Y'all just cool. That's, that, there is no crazy I circumstance. I mean, if we're just cool, for me, I'm not trying nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a dead ass treat you like the homie. Okay. Yeah. So you have so you treat dudes like homies. So you friend zone a lot of dudes that try to get at you. But you'd be like, nah, I'm good. So your friends on them. You're mean to keep dudes away that you don't want. <laughs> so what does it take for a dude to get the green light? Like what type of dude will be successful in really getting to know you? Um, to me it's looks and then person like looks, I know this is might sound weird to a lot of people. Looks, then personality. You it's know usually the other way around for women, ain't Personality, it? looks. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm saying. I get my own, so I'm not looking for, you know. And I feel like I can bring a person, certain personalities out of um, a guy if I like you. You know, I've like I've dated. Like wait, you said you can bring certain personalities out of a guy. Could you elaborate? <laughs> like if you have a shy guy, right? Uh -huh. And um, or he's just very reserved. I'm a mm -hmm. talkative person, and I think you know because opposites attract. I ask questions, yeah. or I make you comfortable enough to you know bring out a personality that you might not show to your homeboys, right. or you might not show you know to the outside world because right. you're shy or you're uncomfortable, you know. Or if you have a guy that think he, he that nigga, you mm -hmm. know, it's just like around me, I could bring out a personality where you just chilled, or you know, you kind of humble, or. So I, which, I don't know how to explain it. Like he might just. So which do you prefer, a dude that's that really feels himself? I don't want to say full of himself, but really feels himself. Like you said, he feel like he that dude, or a dude that's kind of like timid a little bit on the shy, maybe doesn't talk as much. Which one do you prefer? A secure man. Like okay. you got to be secure. Um, yeah. I've dealt with too many insecure men, and it's just for me. I ra like I rather you be feeling yourself, cause then that way I know you know you're not gonna be down my throat all the damn time. Like, yeah. why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Like <clears throat> I, I dated my ex was like that. Like he he was so insecure to the point I'm just like I can't do this shit. Like, How long were y'all together? For on and off ten years. On and off for ten years. <laughs> And it took you 10 years to, to realize, realize that? that? No, it didn't take me 10 years. It's like, you know, when you want to leave a situation, but it's just like comfort zone. So he's like, you know, he'll come back around, apologize. He changed. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Like, let's try this again. And, you know, kept trying it again. Kept Did you think it. it really would have led to something successful? No. So why stay in the pocket for 10 years? I'm comfort. Just, comfort? Yeah, like, you know, uh -huh. like, and I think a lot of women actually end up in that zone of whether it's marriage too, like mm -hmm. just comfort. You don't want to start over. You don't want that, you know, first stages of how you doing? What's your name? Yeah. What you like? I, I don't care what you trying to do. So, like, so the fear of starting over. Yeah. That's what much. it really was. And it just okay. like, I mean, I dated like it went, whenever we would break up, I would date. Yeah. Um, but I was, I think a side of me was just like, all right, I know he going to come back. So I'm just, 
comfortable. They, yeah, comfortable. Like these guys are just like rebounds almost. You know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't taking them serious. And, right. And it was it was just fun. I why was do, young. Why do women fear starting over so much? Uh, I can't speak for other women. <laughs> you? I mean, now I can start over all day, every day. I, I'm just, I'm going to block you starting over. Like, mm-hmm. I don't care about none of that. Yeah. Um, I think some of it might just play with when you're comfortable with someone. Mm-hmm. Just because they might know so much about you. And then it's just like, when you have a new relationship I feel like sometimes you kind of putting on that mask because you want to appear so good. You really don't know someone until you really get to know them. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. it took me 10 years to, had I, even though I knew this person, I, well, I thought I knew this person, every year I, see, I saw a different person. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, wait, you weren't that person, you know, yesterday. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's like you see different sides of them because now they're, they're comfortable with you as well. So yeah. it's like when you're with your family, you know, your family know the ugly, the whatever about yeah. you. That the rest of the world don't know. Right. Like you could go out here in the world, put on a mask and put on a facade. Like you could be that nigga, mm-hmm. and then your family be like yo lay mask. Like you, yeah. you know these people yeah. thinking you this and that. Like yeah. but your family know you. So I feel like in relationships, it becomes that. Like women, we're um, I'm trying to find the right words. I feel like we get comfortable because we're emotionally attached to, mm. and I think we react with our emotions. So it's just like. You don't know how to let, I don't know, I, you don't know how to let, it takes a lot of work. It, and it's been a lot, even for me, like, in, yeah, that's what just emotions, in my healing journey, yeah. like, I'm like, shit, I, I don't want to, I done became so to myself, I don't mm. want to deal with it again. Yeah. So are you dating? Are you currently dating? I'm not currently dating. Mm. I don't know what you would call dating. I mean, I, right. Ain't that I, word, I might so... respond, you know what I'm saying, to a DM here and there, but like go out on a date. That's what and... I mean. Like, do you currently go out on dates to get to know somebody? No. I haven't done that in I don't know how long. I've, I went on dates with my, myself. <laughs> I was ready to say, I saw a photo on your Instagram of you celebrating 14 years of your business anniversary. I, yeah, I date myself. I'm dating okay. myself and I'm actually, I'm just in a place where I'm trying to get to know myself. And I think that's the mistake we make um, mm. as humans. Yeah. We rush into something or we trauma bond with people. Yeah. because that's it, big. Yeah, no, because it's trauma. like if you haven't healed from your last relationship, mm-hmm. right? And then you're just, you're bored or you're sad and you're emotional. You meet another girl. Mm-hmm. She go, she might go through the same situation, but you yeah. don't know that. And then y'all just trauma bond. Yeah. And then both of y'all now clicking. And mm-hmm. it's just like, y'all both wasn't even ready for another relationship because right. you ain't healed from your last one. Right. Is and it... you don't know yourself either. And yeah. I think a lot of people are not self-aware. So it makes it worse because when you're self-aware... You'll you'll know the red flags and you'll walk away from it. And that's where I am now in life. Like the smallest things that don't align with me, I'm like, you do not fit for me. You know, like I could have a conversation with a guy now. And before, you know, I might have the little phone. Oh, what are we doing next? You know, where we going out? Whatever. Now it's just like, and maybe because I'm older. So, you know, what you doing? I want to get to know you on a beyond the surface level, you know, Mm -hmm. then I can tell myself, okay, you're not for me. So what are some red flags that'll let you know a guy's not for you? A uh, red flag? I don't know. I don't or conversation. Have... It sounds like it's certain things that a guy can say or do that, whether it's the slightest, you'll know now because you're self-aware. You'll be like, nah, I'm good. Like, are there certain things in particular? Or no, it's not certain things. It's, it's just from the, the com- yeah, from the conversation. Okay, like I if you. I feel like I'm big on energy. Like, if I pick up that energy, I'm like, yeah, no. You're gotcha. not for me. I could sit there and, you know, ha ha he he with you. Yeah. You might say one little thing and I'm yeah. like, yeah, no. Got you. Qual- disqualified. <laughs> copy, copy. Nah, that's that's good to be self-aware. And like you said, it does, it takes spending time by yourself. A lot of people don't like, a lot of people do not like to be lonely. I love it. It's a lot of power that comes out of getting comfortable being lonely. Because yeah. like you said, you get to know yourself and you get to realize how much time you've been wasted with people that have been bad for your energy. But you've just been staying there because it's comfortable it's comfortable yeah and I, like now i love my solitude yeah. i don't like being around people i gotta choose to be around you yeah now we're, we're at the end of the day we are relationship creatures so yeah, we, we are, are built and meant for relationships so uh, i'm comfortable but at the same time i do like being around people but not to the point where i'll take away what's best for me just to be around you around just to be yeah. around you like you have people that can't step out the house and do something fun 
unless they're with somebody. And I think that's yeah. insane. Like if you're that attached to having to be around people, I think that's bad. Like I've I've dealt with women before and I'll tell them like, yeah, I'll be chilling by myself or I'll do this yeah. by myself. I'll be like, really? You can do this by yourself? I'm like, see, that's a problem. You may yeah, have you, attachment you, you issues. You don't know how to, how to be by yourself. Yeah. Like I mean, and I feel like, you know, you can, it's not even attachment issue. What do you call it? Um, Clingy. Like. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, you have to be attached to something or someone somewhere. But I don't somehow. think that, you know, even with that, I don't think there's anything wrong with being clingy, mm -hmm. but you also have to know how to be by yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if I like somebody, I am clingy. Mm -hmm. I may not come off like that because, like I said, I'll, I'll be talking shit to guys. Yeah, you mean the guys. Yeah, but yeah. if I like a guy, oh, mm -hmm. he probably, you know, I've actually had a guy tell me I'm clingy. Yeah. And I'm like, hold up. Like, if I don't like your, you know, your ass is mm -hmm. a problem. Mm -hmm. And now that I do like you, mm -hmm. I'm clingy. You can't win out here. No, you can't. So I just so you you're dating yourself. <laughs> Let me ask you if you would do something because I've seen this a few times on social media. Would you marry yourself? I'm I'm at that point right now. Yeah, I ask because there's a is a, a a shiny ring on your left ring oh, finger right now. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm trying to put two or two together. I'm like, does she marry herself? Oh, let me... <laughs> no, I didn't marry myself. Yeah? yeah. Talk to me. How, no, I didn't. I just... I how was the reception? It. Who was the bridesmaids? Myself. Like... Myself and I. Yeah. Me, myself, and I. Where no, was the, I just... How was the honeymoon? It was great. I just came back for my honeymoon. Yeah? Yeah, I went on a cruise. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yep. Wait, an actual one or is this your wedding honeymoon? No, no, it was, some, it was a client's wedding. I'm just joking. Okay. but I'm not, I'm... I'm not married to myself. Okay. I just use this to pretend. Like, if I'm okay. out, you know, like, I don't wear it all the time, but if I'm out, you know, uh -huh. I kind of, it's just like a, I think some women do that. But it don't work, though, because guys are still talk to married women, believe so it or not. So it's a defense, it's another defense mechanism is yeah. what you're saying to keep guys away? Yeah, but they okay. don't, they don't stay away. Okay. Men, men do a lot of shitty shit. Yeah, shit. Women too. A lot of people. I mean, are, women do too. A, a, a lot of people are devious. Well, let me ask you this, because they say, and I've heard this from married men and men with children. They yeah. say, like, if a woman knows a guy is married, she'll want him even more. And I hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. Married men do that all the time, and I actually start finding out married women step out too, and I'm like. For me, I'm not going to get married. If we're married, we're stuck together. I mm -hmm. don't care what you do. And I think it's because of my culture. We're, you know, it's like we're put, brought up like that. Like, y'all yeah. gonna stick it out no mm -hmm. matter what it is. But stepping out, you know, to me is just like stupid. Don't get married. Be single. Right. Like that. And I think that's why I love kind of just being single now. Is I'm not. Or, or, or some people. Or no some one. people like open relationships. Do you think that's real? You can love someone and still lust for someone else. Nah? I don't believe in that. No such a thing? No such thing. Okay. I feel like lust comes from selfishness. It doesn't come from hormones and... Yeah, but it's selfish because it's like if you love someone and then you're lusting off on another person, to me it's just like, why? Then just... You could, you could love someone and not be committed to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I love my family. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love... You could love so many different things, but that don't mean, you know, I'm committed to my family. But I love them. Yeah. So how can I put it? I can't step out on my family. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, I will I, I yeah, I, I get what you're coming so from. So I could love like you can love a woman yeah. and not be married to her. Yeah. Cause why why are you gonna marry her and then next thing you know, you're like, okay, I'm gonna make her my wife. But I think that that girl's a bad bitch. You know so you're she... saying you can love someone but love them so much that you don't marry them out of a selfless act. Yeah, because selfless. you don't wanna you don't wanna get with her, you love her, you don't wanna get with her knowing you're gonna creep out and hurt her. So he's like, I love you so much, I'm not even gonna do that to yeah, you. Yeah, I'm not gonna so do that to saying. you. But most people are selfish in this, you know, day yeah. a lot of people are selfish. So all right, right, so let me ask you something. Back to your ring. And you being married to yourself. Yeah, I'm going to take this ring off. Nah, nah, I like it. I like it. I like it. So you're out and the dude asks you if you're married. You say They yes. don't ask. They don't. They just be like, where your man at? Where do you, okay, where do you be? Where, where? What type of guys do you attract? Let me ask. What type of guys do I attract? Uh -huh. Like now? Yeah. I, I, funny thing is I attract all different types, mm -hmm. which is weird to me. Um... And I've dated all different types too. Like I've dated the hood boy, I dated the dough boy, I've dated, you know, I've dated the millionaire. Uh, it's just I've dated the broke nigga, like <laughs> the mama's boy. I've dated mm -hmm. so many different types. Mm -hmm. Um, and I attract so many different types. Like 
Is it a certain type that you prefer more than others? Physical, yes. Which but is what? Tall, maybe a darker complexion, mm -hmm. um, athletic body, or mm -hmm. you know, just got some meat on them. Yeah. Like, you gotta have some meat on you. Yeah. Like, okay, and as far as overall picture? The type of guy? Just mm -hmm. someone who got his shit together. Um financially, you yeah. know what I'm saying? They stable financially, mm -hmm. like they're they got their health together, hygiene, like that's you know, mm -hmm. someone who just is well put together. Cause I feel like I care so much about my you know, my appearance. I got my stuff together. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't have to be the richest person, but you gotta be well off. You know, can he make less than you? No. No, so he has to make more than you. Can, equal or more. Oh, equal or more. Yeah. Can he you being an entrepreneur, can he have work a regular nine to five? Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, to me, I don't look at a nine to five in a bad way. Like if you're a nine to five in the corporate world, mm -hmm. you know, you're making six figures or more depending on your position, you know? So. Well, I didn't ask as far as it being a bad thing. I asked more so because I hear entrepreneurs, they prefer another entrepreneur because of the time aspect, if yeah. you would, even though entrepreneurs tend to work more than I used to, than I used to say that, like, I'd rather have another business person or mm -hmm. another entrepreneur because I feel like my partner, I want to have a business partner. And yeah. I feel like relationships is business, you know, transactions sometimes. But um, I, my person doesn't have to be an entrepreneur. I feel like if he's a nine to five person, we can balance off each other because mm -hmm. I have an entrepreneurial mindset and he can have... Um, that nine to five corporate mindset, we put it together, like we can do so much more, you know, yeah. um, as far as just everything, whether it's business, you know, um, family things, it just, it's so many benefits from either side, yeah. you know? You said relationship can be a business to some extent. Do you believe that marriage is a business? Yeah. Ah, you do. I got my ass chewed up a couple of weeks ago for me and Corey, shout out to Corey, a guest I had, and we were breaking it down from a man's perspective, how we see marriage as a business. Yeah. And women chewed our ass up. Men agreed with us. Most women, some women were like, I could see, I could see that. Yeah, no, it's a Yeah, to a lot me, of women I chewed our ass up. I see it as a business transaction. Um, elaborate. What, as a marriage? Yeah, like, like, why do you see marriage as a business coming from a woman? Because for me, it's just like, it's a give and take. You get what I'm saying? Um, so you're it's saying an investment. Are you are you speaking monetarily alone or other things as well? It's different things that play part in it. I mm -hmm. feel like. Um, I guess, I, like I said, I could only speak for myself. Yeah, I feel yeah, like for me, business. I mean, marriage would be almost like a business transaction because I want to. What are we investing in? What are we doing? Whether it's, you know, it doesn't specifically have to be business. We might want to go buy a house. We might want to go flip a home. We might want to do X, Y, and Z. How are we um, investing into each other? You know, how are we um, going to elevate each other? And I don't know. I don't know how to really explain it, but. So it sounds like you're saying not money wise yeah. per se, but trade value wise, a give and take yeah. because it's, it's, it's an exchange I met. It's always some type of and exchange, even if it's like, like a business. How can I say? Even if, you know, I grew up where most most of the women in my culture are housewives. Mm -hmm. It's still a, a transaction. Mm -hmm. The woman is at home cooking and cleaning, taking care of home while you go, you know, work. Whatever you're doing is a give and take. So to me, that's a transaction. Mm -hmm. If I go work and pay the bills, you got to do the household stuff. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? It's a transaction. Yeah. So... Some people, I guess some women may not see it like that because when people think business, they're automatically thinking business. Yeah. But business is a transaction. How, you know, how are you making, how are you making it make sense mm -hmm. in some, you know, some way? Yeah. It's not always a uh, profit, mm -hmm. you know, like you lose some, you win some, even with business. Yeah. So if your husband is broke, you know, or if your wife is broke, somebody got to, somebody got to pick somebody up. Right. Somebody got to make an investment, you know, right. so. I don't know. I just see like for me, I feel like my um my marriage or my relationship will eventually be a business transaction yeah. because if I stop, you know, if my husband is the sole provider, I want to see where I come in place where, you know, I'm helping him elevate more because that also helps me. So when you said your culture coming up, how the women are mostly housewives, uh, what is that culture exactly? African. 
Okay. So I'm going to say instead of some okay. African culture. Okay. Yeah, the African culture. Most women, um, you know, the husband, like, fully. And I think it's all culture should be like that. Mm -hmm. And all cultures, I feel like, is the same. The not, man not, is the provider. It's not, not in not this day here, and age. Not yeah, here, not in this day and age. But back in the day, even in America, like, you had, the man was the yeah, provider, the leader, right, the everything. And right. you did have women that were housewives. Because right. women couldn't work. But now, you know, we're living a generation where women are more dominant. Women are more independent. And men are just kind of, you know, setting back. Or it's an issue for men being providers. Or men, you know, wanting to step up. Because it's just now you're considered, or you're a gold digger. Or you don't want to work. Or you're, you know, you're not independent. And it's just like, no. If you go back in the days, mm -hmm. men did provide. Right. And, and, it, and it still should be that way. Yeah. Uh, but I think men are stepping back from that. Because the aspect from the woman that came along with, and we're not talking about the more dominant woman. Oh no, we all talking about the more dominant women. The aspect that <laughs> yeah. came with the housewives back then and even today in Africa, like you said, yeah. the culture that you came from, uh, it was a certain it was certain characteristics and aspects that came along with the women as well. And I think when we see that they don't have that, that makes us step away from it. You're not gonna tell me a dude that's able to provide comes across a chick who's brings all the characteristics of a housewife, not dominant. Feminine, like really caters to the dude. Um, and women hate doing that shit. They hate even hearing that no, shit. No, that is not they true. They hate hearing another woman catering to the dude, right? That's well, not true. Let me just get this off. And if we don't see that, then we're like, I'm good. But if it's one that carries all of the elements of a traditional housewife, let's say, you cannot tell me there's going to be a dude that's going to step away from that just because. So if we step away from something, it's because it lacks something that we would want. How do you know that, though? Because you're saying if a dude don't see that, she can't just show you all those characteristics. I'm not saying just... in one day. I'm talking exactly, about Exactly, but I'm most about dudes, dating. they're not going to take um, it that far. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to speak on just my end. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys will see me as independent, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So then they look at me as, oh, she don't need for nothing. Or, you know, so, or they might just look at me, it may, might be as a business transaction, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? On a different, like, level. Mm -hmm. But if you really get to know me, I'm not trying to be, you know, dominant. Like, I'm trying to live in my soft life. Like, but... It's so hard because dudes don't approach me that way. And then I, you know, you see the dominant or that alpha female come out of me because you're just like, when a guy approaches me a certain way, I already start catching attitude because you're just like, if I told you I was a broke chick, I was this, I was that, mm -hmm. you want to cater to me. No, you want to send me cash app, you want to send me this. But right. because you see I'm independent, I got my own stuff going mm -hmm. on, you already want to treat me like I got it together. Now, Mariam, you said dudes don't approach you like that. But let's rewind. You said <laughs> off the gate, you're an asshole to dudes. Because that's how I feel like that's how they approach me. So what if, so even if a dude, so just random approaching you, like even if a dude approaches you right, like what's your initial like state when a dude's tried to approach you just in general, not even knowing you? I'm not. I'm actually nice. I feel like I'm nice, but I laugh it off because I kind of take it as a joke. So you'll allow it? Do you allow it off bucks? Like with a dude you don't know, a random dude comes and approaches you. What's your state like right then and there? I might, depending on the scenario, mm -hmm. I might walk away. I'll ignore guys and walk away, act like I ain't hear them. Or um, if he's at a gas station, he might, you know, say something. And I'm like, okay. And I'll ignore him, keep pumping my gas type mm -hmm. thing. I might see him at a grocery store, you know, I'm, I'm going. And I've actually been harassed like that. Like I I'm, was, I'm not talking about harassed. Well, I'm, not harassed. Um, I've been approached in different, you know, sceneries. Mm -hmm. Like, it might be some sceneries, like, I will interact with you for a second, but you're not going to get my number. So what I'm trying to get at is, like, what does it take for that? You want to live in your soft era. What does it take? Because if you're initially mean pushing dudes off, if you're initially mean, like how can a dude even get to see that soft ever? I don't know. Like I guess I don't really show it because I'm so used to just being and not even I don't even want to say attack mode because that sounds bad. Mm -hmm. Um I'm just so used defense to like mode. just brushing a guy off. Used to be in a defense mode. Or yeah, like. I'm used to that. Like and I and I think it just took years of mm -hmm. being like that that I don't know how to sometimes turn it down. Exactly, and my thing, going back to about two, three minutes ago, what oh, I'm saying gonna, is- You just gonna read me. And, and, and what I'm saying is, 
even if you do have that soft girl ever somewhere deep down inside, if we can't even get to get that, get to it, I get it. Then I mean, what are we supposed but so, to do? But when when a person finally does get, I'm not saying I don't give no guys no chances. Mm -hmm. When a person finally gets away from that level, mm -hmm. they do get the soft, you know, side of me. Get away from what level? Like me, just the mean Miriam. And, like, and what I'm saying is, how can a guy even get? It's hard to explain. Guys, I mean. Obviously, I'm not not talking to guys, so mm -hmm. it's guys that got away with that. You know, I've dated, you know, mm -hmm. but... So do you prefer to be approached in person or over the DM? It depends. On what? Because I don't go... Um, I don't mind um, DM now mm -hmm. because I don't go out like I used to. I'm not... I'm a homebody. Like So literally. you're in the grocery store. You see a guy, I'm going off of your preference. You're seeing a guy that's tall, darker skin, somewhat muscular build. And he has good hair. His hair don't look crazy because you you don't like bad hair, right? <laughs> I used to go there. I didn't yeah, even yeah, go yeah. there. All right. So you see, and he approaches you. He's on some chill shit. He's just asking you, I don't know, whatever. Just something random, but he's just striking conversation. I'm going to flirt back. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to flirt back. Like, I don't be mean to every... You got so to so he has to. So does he have to look good or does it depend yeah. on his approach? Both. Okay. Yeah, both. Okay. Yeah, it just depends. I've I've had guys that don't look the look, but their approach was, you know what I'm saying, nice. And I don't be mean to them, but I might even give them my number, but after a while it's like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not interested because I was just being nice. And then I become mean afterwards. So I don't always Lord be mean. Lord have mercy. I mean, All right, I got you. I got you. It's, it's, it's a maze. I, hit, yeah, it's, I, I got you. It's yeah. a maze. Okay. But once you figure me out, like, I'm a great puzzle. That sounds like a... <laughs> <laughs> I am a great puzzle. I'm sure you are, but just a, a lot of dudes don't even want to go through that work. That's and all that's I'm saying. fine. Guess yeah. what? Yeah. So I feel like I'm worth it. You know, when you put the puzzle together, guess what you do? Mm -hmm. You happy? Like you got it. Do you think you've missed out on some good opportunities being a puzzle? Yeah. I'm not gonna say I missed out on good opportunity. When you say good opportunities, Can you bring like, the mic just a little bit closer to you. When you say good opportunities, you mean as far as dating? Uh, yeah, or? like a dude that really could have worked out and been something that you know could have been something good in the long run. Yeah, I've made some dumb. I'm not gonna say dumb decisions. I have mm -hmm. fumbled. Yeah, I, have, I have fumbled, good man. But then when I think back at it, I'm like, did I really fumble them? Because I look at it, if what's meant for me mm -hmm. won't. You know what I'm saying? It's Won't not, be a question. Yeah, it's not wrong with fumbling good people. When it comes to fumbling good chicks, I'm a first. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, fame. and I guess when I say I fumbled, <laughs> I just mean because these men literally would probably kiss the ground I walk on. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just so like nonchalant about it. Then sometimes I feel like that's my karma because the guys I, you know, I typically choose is like, hold on, wait, like, cause you know, I'm like homeboy, but I'm not giving him the time and the, you know, play. Like, even right now, like, I got a guy, like, he so want to get married. And I'm like, you don't know me. <laughs> you know, you don't know me. And he's like, I'll do whatever. And he's like, why are you so mean to me? And then he always says, you know what? That's why, because he'll do whatever. Yeah, but then he says, you know, I just pray, you know, that God softens your heart for me. <laughs> and it's, it's a, it's... <laughs> I, you know, it's I mean, this is a very typical scenario. Let me just say that first and foremost. And it's because I think every guy has gone through it at one point where they yeah. thought that's the best way to move. And deep down inside, we don't understand why it's not the best way to move. But brother, let me tell you, it's not the best way to move. What do you mean? Because it's the whole, what is it? Good guy finished last. Because the way he is, you don't like the way he is, do you? If so, you would no, be No, I do. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Like... I think he's an amazing guy. He actually even fits everything. He just, the physical just then is not there. what is the The attraction the is not there. The physical isn't there? The attraction is not there, yeah. So everything else is there, but the attraction is it. But if a guy was attractive, but he didn't have those other traits and he was standoffish, he would get the time of day, would he not? He has. I mean, I've been there. Yeah, I've been there. But then I, I'm only there for a period of time, though. You get what I'm saying? Because... Going back to just knowing my self worth and being self aware, mm -hmm. after a while it's like, all right, that's the red flag that I've been ignoring just because you know mm -hmm. you fit my physical like attraction. Fuck that shit. There's plenty of fine dudes. Just like I look at myself like a female shit. There's plenty of you know beautiful women out here, and I, I'll tell guys that go find another woman. Like mm -hmm. I, it's like for me, I'm not pressed. 
because it's a lot of beautiful women out there yeah. and I wholeheartedly believe my person is out there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I've had a guy say, oh, but in fact, your, your friend, the one who introduced us, he mm -hmm. said, a woman like you will have to settle. I said, no, baby, a woman like me going to be single forever. Like, I'm just not going to settle. A woman like you would have to settle. Yeah, that's what he told me. He was just like, because he don't think um, I would find a guy that meets all of my criteria of what I'm looking for. And, but for me, and I'm, call me the Lulu if you want, but I feel like it is. It is it's what? A, it's a guy that will check off my physical, my financial, mm -hmm. my, you know, everything, like spiritual. I feel it's a guy that will check off all them boxes and still meet those requirements and we'll just be perfect together. Like, I feel like my Prince Charming is out there. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> listen, I think this is a perfect segue. You think your Prince Charming is out there. So recently you were on the pop, what is it? Pop balloon or pop. what is it called? Pop the balloon. Find or what is it called? really find love or pop a balloon. Wait. Pop the balloon or find love. Pop the balloon or find love. That's what it's called. So uh, let's rewind to the beginning. Like I said, you were on there. You kind of went viral on a few clips from that. So let's start from the beginning of the experience. Like, how does one even get invited to one of those pop the balloon or find loves? Um, you show interest. You show interest um, just like any other, you know. Um, so that's what there. happened with you? You had to like. Yeah, I was just like, hey, I want to, you know, be casted. I'm interested in finding love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm laughing because. Yeah, why you laugh? <laughs> hey, listen. Because when I did it, honestly, like, I did it as a joke. Yeah. Like, and I, I mean, of, of course, I mean, I did it to be funny. I was one of the experience. I was like, you know what? I wonder if they're going to go in on me or if I'm going to go in, like, because I just know my personality. But, and I feel like sometimes men will lie to you if, you know, you're texting or whatever. I'm like, I want to know what they would say about me on spot. Mm -hmm. So I did it as a joke. Like, I wanted the experience. Like, okay. So, so that was why you went on as a joke. Yeah. Why did you go on? As a joke. Okay. Like, I wanted to be, I was just being funny. Okay. I really didn't go. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to even say that, but... So do you think you really could find love on nah. one of the pop the balloon things? No. No? In my, it, That's just my opinion. <clears throat> I feel like it's deeper than that, you know? Mm. Um, you can't find love. But people be walking off into the sunset after they partner but up. But that, and... too many people... But, I mean, I don't know how much you watch it. Too many people don't go past the first date. Mm. Or, yeah, know, I've never watched or heard of what happens beyond yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it is a couple that actually got engaged on there from what I see. Um, but that's a rarity. Rarity, yeah. exactly. I, I, Out of 19 episodes, you have, you know, what, well, 20 episodes, you have yeah. one. You get what yeah. I'm saying? I personally would. I don't think I could find real because I'm just low no. key and I think that's just too, I don't know. But I don't think I would go on one of those. If I did, it would only be for like branding and marketing purposes. You just took it out of my mouth. That I didn't want to say that, yeah. you know, it's because cool. it's, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure majority of people like perfect example. Oh boy, the second dude on the episode that you did with the suit and the yes, joint. Yes, but I didn't want to come off like that because I really wanted to actually participate in. This yeah, of course. You're you not just going to say, "Hey, I'm just here." I'm just here for I'm marketing trying to brand purposes. myself, yeah. you know. But, uh, of but, course, no one's going to say I, that. And the funny part is, I knew I was going to go viral. Like, mm. how, did, how no, did you know? Ain't no girl like me on there. Like, not on no arrogant anything. What but do you mean, a girl like you? I just feel like my caliber of women. What caliber is that? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just, I, listen, I'm. I mean, I don't, I got to watch what I say, you know? <laughs> I mean, because, you know, people can perceive things any kind of way. Um. Talk to me, M-O-B. Uh, I got to watch what I say. Oh, my God. Um, I just don't think, um, one, like, for me, just being a certain a fair skin, um, I feel like people automatically, you know, judge you off a certain way, like that pretty girl or whatever. And it's just like, oh, you know, there's a pretty girl. I knew, not saying none of the girls wasn't pretty or mm -hmm. anything, because all the girls, I think, was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, I don't know. I just knew I was going to go viral. And I think on, on another reason why I knew I was going to go viral, it was just the, the stuff I said like about my culture. And it's, I don't know how to explain. I just knew I was going to go viral. Okay. You had a feeling. 
I had a, a feeling. I, cause, like I, I, the only way I can explain it is I have not seen a chick like me on there. Mm -hmm. All right, fair <laughs> enough. So one of the so there was one of the clip that I seen of you on TikTok uh, that did go viral actually was you popped the balloon. You were actually you want to know something? You probably already know this. You were the very first person to pop a pop. balloon on a whole. I mean, off bucks. Soon as the episode started, as soon as I don't know if dude even made it in frame. No, you yeah. popped the balloon. But see, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people don't know that, like, none of the guys was my interest. But, mm -hmm. you know, I was just like, I came in there with a mi you mindset of to, to it, participate. Make it entertaining. Exactly. Yeah. So I was just like, and my homegirl's like, my homegirl's there. She's she like, you better not pop your balloon again. I'm like, bitch, they're not like, like, yeah. you know, my Still, type. But I was, she was like, no, you say exactly. you're going to participate, exactly. so fucking participate. Exactly. I was like, okay, she right. Yeah. But if you watch the whole thing, you will see, like, I zoned out most of the time. So uh -huh. I'm holding on to the balloon. Uh -huh. Like that episode um, with the guy was, you know, when I, I actually even said that, I'm like, oh, shit, I zoned out. Mm -hmm. But it's live and... Yeah, you mentioned, you I was like, was, I was trying to hear what you were saying. Yeah, like, yeah. You, if you watch it, I said it like three times. Mm -hmm. I was trying to hear what they said. I was trying mm -hmm. to hear what they said. Because I really was, I was there physically, mm -hmm. but mentally I tapped that as soon as they walked in. Because I'm like, not my type. Mm -hmm. But I also said in the beginning, like, I'm trying to stir away from looking at the physical of a guy and actually, you know, getting to know them. Mm -hmm. And kind of getting to know what they have to offer. Because... Physical is important to me. Yeah, that's what you like, say. That's yeah, first. Very for you. important. That's, yeah. You said earlier. That's first. Physical yeah. is first. So personality. That's why I was popping the first. Like uh, in the beginning, you see, I was the first girl. Yeah. Pop, pop. Like hell yeah. no, pop. But yeah. I was just like, no, you are gonna, you know, participate. You said you're not looking at the physical. Give them a chance to actually even talk and let you have a chance to talk. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. But, and we're also told, like you know, um, the host tells us, don't just say, oh, he's not my type. She's not my type. Mm -hmm. Why is he not your type? Why is she not your type? So I was just following the game. Like, I'm like, okay, right. he's not my type because I don't like his physical. I don't right. like his hairline. Yeah. I don't, it, I know it sounds petty, you know what I'm saying? But that's what I'm not attracted to. So if you would approach me in real life, you wouldn't approach me. Mm -hmm. I would have just looked at you, look about, you mm -hmm. know, like walked away from you or I might have laughed it off and kept it pushing. Right. So to me, it was just like, okay, she asked us to say what we don't like. So mm -hmm. if he would have approached me in real life, I would have looked at him and be like, in my mind, I might have, I might have said the things I did say, like that nigga hairline messed up. Mm -hmm. Like you not about to, I'm not about to give you my number type yeah. thing. You know what I'm saying? So I was just playing the game. Yeah. So okay, let's start with the first part, the hair part, which threw you off because you're someone that works with hair yeah. a lot. So you really pay attention to detail when detail. it comes to I'm hair. I'm very detailed. So the dude, I can't remember what he looked like. What was it about his hair that you didn't like? Was the first one? guy yeah. or which one? Or the, the one that went one, viral? The very first one that you popped. Yeah, I think that was the same one. The first no, one. No, that one didn't go viral. No, not the one where you said his hair. The first one where you was like- Oh, the first one. Yeah. It was just his hairline. His hairline. I actually thought he was, you know, decent looking. Mm -hmm. It was just, I was just like, and then his hair wasn't done. I'm like, damn, you didn't put no oil, no mm -hmm. moisturizer. Yeah, there. that's like, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah that's what I was the one like, I'm uh, sir, first your hair. I mean, your hairline, we can work with that because there's ways to fix things. You know what I'm saying? So, do, okay, so if a dude has a jacked up hairline, would you prefer him to fix it up, shimmy it up with whether it's Beijing or him go to Turkey or shave it off and rock the body? Yeah, all of that. Like Which one? what whichever one he, okay. you know what I'm saying, comfortable with. I actually when when we were talking about earlier about fumbling, man, yeah. um it was a guy like I was dating before. He was great guy, amazing guy, everything. I couldn't get past his hairline. Mm. And he always wore a hat. Yeah. Lord I pray he don't see this. It's cool. <laughs> Cause I'm I'm the reason I'm asking is I'm bald. Yeah. I have okay. a baldy. But I came to realization with my shit. I yeah, think you when, have to. Yeah, I think when dudes and me, I be joking, but I tell dudes when they try to uh, put the Beijing, Beijing, I be like, yo, join the club, brother. Like, just da, da, da. go bald. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know and, what I'm saying? And I just think that's the thing that women don't like when people, dudes try to hang on. Yeah, you. some people hang on. Yeah. And, and I wasn't even being funny like with him. Like, I would approach it like, you know, I think he, like I said, he always wore his hats. And mm. I hated that. We'll go on a date. And I'm like. Yeah. I like to dress up, so I yeah. and I like to keep, I carry myself a certain way. So I'm yeah. like, nigga, take the fucking hat yeah, off. Yeah, the ball and the plus, like dressing up the bald head makes it so much sharper. Yeah. So one thing with me that I always do, especially like usually when a when a woman meets me, I meet a woman for the first time. I'm usually have my body out anyway. Like I wear it out a lot now. When I first shaved my head, I had the hat on for a whole year. 
I'm not gonna lie for a whole 365 Why? days because it's it's something that it's, you it's never experienced. Right. Okay. Like okay. you're cold behind your ears now. You feel every gust yeah, of wind everything. that you like. What the fuck? Ain't nothing wrong with the bald head though. Yeah. It's well, not. see, we don't realize that at first. Yeah. At least for me, I'm speaking for me. I didn't yeah. realize that at first. Now, what made me get comfortable with taking off my hat is the amount of grown ass woman that would say I was handsome. Yeah, it looks nice. And that shit was like, oh, okay, so this joint, yeah. And like I said, grown woman. I went bald at 23. This woman, 30 plus. I've never, you know what I'm saying? At 23, that's crazy. I shaved it at 23. Is, that, is it hereditary? I think so, because, all right, so I learned this in biology. <laughs> Laugh, okay. No, you you good because I'm comfortable with it now. <laughs> I will take my head off now, but I ain't, ain't shaving in two days. So it's a, shit. My brother went bald at twenty. God, yeah. Man. But here's the thing. So baldness. Your comes, hairline had to be jacked up. Well, like, mine. Like, it wasn't. I could have went till okay. twenty four, but I okay. had a little bit in the. I had the middle joint too, so I had the bird's nest. And <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what really did it for you, Miriam. Listen, <laughs> I play football, right? <laughs> And my joint was leading and me. And I'm laughing because I deal with so yo, many guys. I'm laughing that, with you, yo. I'm no, laughing because with, I deal with so many guys that have your issues and yeah. they just don't want to shave that's, it off. And, that's and it turns me off, yeah, though. You yeah, know, I'm no, like, no, no, get no, rid no, of no. this shit. I didn't want to at first. I probably could have won another year, but it would have looked crazy. It would have George it Jefferson. Crazy, yeah. So I'm in college, right? I'm playing football and my shit is starting to leave me <laughs> and I'm sick. So one day I'm meeting with my football coach, my defense coach. Shout out to Coach Sewell over at Morgan State now. He coached at Bowie State at the time. I'm outside of his office, right? You know, college students, we'd be tired. So I'm outside of his office waiting for him for a meeting. So I'm like this in my in my lap waiting for him. <laughs> my head down. I'm like taking a little you nap or whatever, right? He walks by. He's like, hey man, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. No, seriously. That was the best thing I could have ever heard. Like, just um, let it go. Yeah, so I was 22 at the time. I turned 23 a few months later, and I'm getting my hair cut. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm about to be 23. Jordan, yeah. Jordan, look. Shave it. <laughs> and, and I shaved you it. You had a I, good excuse. And I, and I never... Exactly. Ain't that the Jordan, best, right? Yeah, I said, Jordan, yeah. Jordan, look. They'd be like, yeah. And I never looked back since. But like I said, I wore it for a whole year, but then I got comfortable with it. And I realized the power of being confident with confident yeah. with a body. It takes a lot of confidence. And I and I get it, you know what I'm saying? And even when I said about his hairline, I was like in my mind, like, damn, Marion, why you say that? Cause did you tell oh, you talking about on the show? No, I haven't talked to him since then. Like the but I, in my dated? mind, I was like, no, no, the dude I tell, I couldn't tell him. You didn't tell him. No, mm. it was hard. And I think mm. that show kind of challenged me because it was like, mm. it allowed me to just, and that's why I wanted to go on because I wanted to see, you know, how people perceive me too. So I was just like, because in real life, I might not just bluntly came out and said it, you know, like. Why didn't you tell the dude that you were uh, dating? Well, I said it in a discreet way. I'm like, you know, he. <laughs> He got he he went and got his hair done. Well, you know he got a haircut, uh -huh. and then he came, you know, to the date with his hat on. And I'm like, "You just got your haircut. Let me see the fresh yeah, cut. You yeah, looking good? Yeah, like, why you hiding yeah. it? So I'm hyped because yeah. when the guy gets his fresh cut, he want to show it off. You outside, right. so right. he came with that hat. I'm like, I know he don't have this hat on still. Like, yeah. I'm like, let me see your cut. Yeah. So I don't. You don't have a hat, but he did this. Uh, <laughs> I was like. I was like, I know you lying. I'm like, no, let me. I'm like, I did not see it. I'm like, come on. Like, yeah. I couldn't see that. So he finally, you know, lifted up, but he still put it back down. Yeah. And I was just like, why are you wearing a hat? You just got to, you know. Um, did you ever see him without the hat? No. Oh. But we we start talking about like when we're having conversations, I would, you know, kind of bring in stuff about turkey mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I might make jokes. So I'm like, you I'm so like yeah. And I'm like, man, look at these. I'm like, look at this. I'll send it to him. I'm like, yeah. it's crazy that they be doing this type of stuff, like without directly saying it. The turkey. And he was like, yeah, yeah I might go over there too. You know, um, what you think about that? I'm like, shoot, you know, it might look nice. I said, otherwise, you know, I feel like if people have that issue, just shave it off. Yeah. But I would throw out hints. Yeah, like, subtle. I literally, because Instagram, it'll pop up. I'm like, look at this man wig. Yeah. Like, these people crazy. Why not just go get it fixed? Right. Without me directly saying it to him. Yeah. You know, and him taking it offensive, mm. but he just... I think certain things like that, you just, even though it may sting at first, they say the truth first, but it sets you free. Yeah. But all this came from, you know, us talking about uh, preferences Yeah. and, you know, you dealing with a dude who, guys go bald. If your shit is going, if you're going to Turkey, cool. Me, I always say, fellas, join the tribe. 
join the Legion. And I'm all for Turkey. Like, yeah, I, I want to support I, I, my man. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, whatever. Because I want him to support. Like, if, if a guy doesn't like certain things about mm-hmm. me, like, I'm open to changing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, let me know because, and that's why I said I don't understand, like, going back to earlier, how men cheat or women cheat on their person. Mm-hmm. It's just like, if it's a fixable thing, you know what I'm saying? Let's fix it. Mm-hmm. Now, if it's not, I'm not going to commit to somebody that I don't see myself with forever, you know? Do you think you get you could get tired of somebody? You can, but that doesn't mean anything. That just means y'all need to find something else. Like, m- maybe change the date nights. Maybe change how y'all travel. Maybe give each other space. Mm-hmm. He go, you know, he go, he be with the guys here and there. Like, I feel like when you're stuck up under somebody all the time, mm-hmm. you get tired of your family. Mm-hmm. My family get on my fucking nerves. Yeah, no, I. That's why. And that's I'm, just what it is. Yeah. If you're married, you live together. Why do you think my dog ain't here right now? I get tired of my dog. <laughs> That's I get what I'm t- I get tired of people. Yeah, I am too. Yeah. Like, but you. That's why you need. You know, what I'm saying that space. You're just trying to shit. create a safe space where there is. You know, you guys do different date nights where you yeah. guys do different activities. Right. Just finding different things to keep keep the spice going. Yeah, you know. In the pop the balloon thing, uh, you mentioned that you take religion serious because you're Muslim. Yeah. So what is it like? Being a Muslim woman and trying to date, knowing that you take the religion aspect serious, it's it's hard. Um, and I actually got backlash for that because I don't appear to be like your average Muslim woman. You know what I'm saying? I don't appear to be covered up like how they Muslim men, a uh, very strict Muslim men. Let me not say that because I'm I'm more like a modernized, you know, westernized Muslim woman. Like I grew up in America, you know, so I don't appear to be that girl, but it's hard because naturally a man is not going to be like, oh, she's Muslim. Is I need to put it up. Oh, you, you know, she's Muslim, you know, or she might. And I tell guys that now, like, if you guys in my DMs, even from the show, you know, from all walks of the world, they're like, oh, I want to get to them. I'm like, no, thank you. And, you know, I tell them my non negotiable is a non Muslim man. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not. Have I dated non Muslim men? I've dated non Muslim men, if I'm being honest, all my life. You know, all my life, that's what I've dated because I'm not around a Muslim community. I'm not around a Muslim tribe. I'm not around, you know, places where. I can, you know, just be around Muslim men and even in social media, I'm not in the that community. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, the typical guy that's approaching me, he's a regular American guy. He's a reg- he might be Christian, he might be spiritual, he might be whatever. He's not going to be a Muslim guy, you know. Um So you do you want to get married? Absolutely. So he has to be a Muslim man is what you're saying? Absolutely. Okay. So even if everything, even though you've dated Christian, non-Muslim men in the yeah. past, I should say. Yeah. Uh, like, did you know that it wasn't going to that extent of marriage because they weren't Muslim? Yeah. So why well, stay there then? I I stayed there because um, I'm going to go from recently. Like, the guys I've dated recently would say they're spiritual. Right. Um, and spiritual can mean in so many... It can be interpreted in so many different levels yeah. in different ways. Okay. So... I never like look down on it um, because even though I say I'm Muslim, I have a spiritual side, you know, to me, like where I'm just, I believe certain things, you know, in certain ways and I go with what aligns with me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like most people that say they're spiritual, well, a lot of the guys that I have dated, either they say they don't have a religion or they're spiritual, Mm -hmm. like they don't resonate with Islam or they don't resonate with Christianity. Mm -hmm. I give them a chance because it's like maybe, you know, you might change your mind. As far as converting to Islam? Converting, yeah. He might change his mind, you know. Um, And I've had guys that will say that, well, I'll become, don't become a Muslim for me. I want, you know what I'm saying, you to find God within yourself. So that way, you know, he allows you to find me and we do what we got to do together Mm -hmm. And raise our kids. And, and that's one thing I'm big on. I'm like, I don't want to raise my kids confused. We live in a world that is so much confusing, you know, confusion. Like if my kids grow up and they like, oh, I want to be a different, you know, religion, whatever. Cool. That's your choice. But I grew up in a household where I was born and raised a Muslim. You know, mm-hmm. I grew up where both my parents were together. They were married. And 
the household was together, you know, mm -hmm. and it was structured. Yeah. So for me, it's like when I do get married, I want to have that same structure, that same culture, that same tradition. I want to pass it on to my kids because everything my parents instilled in me is still with me today. Not, you know, I might have, you know, did some stuff, whatever, or I might have kind of went astray or I might have been rebellious. But in the back of my mind, I always had what my mom and my dad taught me. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, the things that I grew up with, my culture, has always made me go back to that. And I appreciate it more now that I'm older and I can say, okay, I am, you know, comfortable. Or I am confined in my religion and I want to be able to find a man who is also that because how can we live together? How can we be together? And we can't even pray together, you know? So how do you go about being around or trying to find a Muslim man? I don't, which is kind of crazy for me because I don't know how to. Um, culturally, they would say, oh, if you want to get married, because a lot of, you know, Muslim people, they do arrange marriages. Mm -hmm. They'll do arranged marriages. So if you're like seeking, you know, marriage, whatever, you're you be like, you tell your mom or your dad, they might go to the community. Hey, my daughter, which is so bizarre to me. My daughter wants a husband or whatever. And I think that's why I got the backlash from like that community when I, you know, when I said on the show, oh, I'm Muslim, I'm, you know, religious, whatever. They're like, oh, how can she be religious? Because if you wanted a man, you should have went to the mosque or you should have went X, Y, and Z. I get what you're saying, but that's how you guys did it. That's the old day in culture. You know what I'm saying? Like we live in a new generation and I guess, I can't really say too much because I did go on a show saying, hey, I want to find love, mm -hmm. even though intentionally that wasn't my intention. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. um, the backlash was, oh, how can she say she's Muslim and she went on a Christian dating show? Mm -hmm. You're trying to, you know, say, oh, I'm big on my religion, but you're trying to date a Christian man. And I don't know. Religion is a big controversy and, and I feel like it can be taken a certain way. And sometimes you got to just watch what you say or what you do, because the people that say they're so religious are always the ones who, you know what I'm saying, come at your throat. But it's just like, if I dated this person who is not Muslim and I, you know, I was able to get him to seek God the way I seek God, that's a good thing because mm -hmm. now he seeks God, you know what I'm saying? In, this, in the same way as you do. Yeah, and then I just brought him closer to God. That, you know, that should be a great benefit. So help me understand something. You're saying that, but then earlier you said you don't want to do to change his religion because of you. No, but uh, no, not because of me. Like, you know, if a guy will say, oh, I'll become a Muslim for you. Mm -hmm. Don't become a Muslim okay. for me. I okay. want you to, because I also even, I've had a guy who was like, teach me the religion. I want to become Muslim for you. And I told him, I said, don't become Muslim for me. Yeah. I said, I could give you, you know, books. I could give you whatever. Go seek Allah, you know, God for yourself. Right. And if it's something that aligns with you and we are aligned in the future, I am open to that. But for you to tell me bluntly, like, just because you want to be with me up, oh, I become Muslim. You're not even taking the, you know, the religion serious. You're just trying to become it to be with me. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be with me, mm -hmm. because if you go find God, guess what He gonna do? He gonna find me for you. Mm -hmm. And that's how I look at it. Yeah. You know. And I think because my appearance, the way I look, the way I, I I'm approached, I don't come off as your typical Muslim girl. So it's just like don't don't be saying you're this and you're that because mm -hmm. you don't represent us in a um a good light. Yeah. You know. So. That's what you're saying. But yeah. I got a lot of backlash off of that. That's why I was like, mm, I don't even want to, you know. No, people were literally telling me, don't claim us. I'm like, I'm mm. not claiming y'all. I'm claiming God. Right, <laughs> You right. know, so take it how you want to take yeah. it. So, okay. like, my even my family, they were upset. Yeah. Like, I mean, upset. Mm. I, I'm literally explaining to my mom. I'm like, Ma, it was a joke. Yeah. I'm like, you know me. Yeah. We were literally arguing. I'm like, you know me. Yeah. I'm like, do you really think I'm going to go on a, a show to actually find a man, marriage. Yeah, yeah to get married. And, off I, of and no, for real, because it's so crazy to her, you know, show. because she pressures like that, you know, like in my culture, when you're a certain age too, like it's, they put that pressure on you. You need to get married. If you, like my mom would be like, if you got a man right now, what are you waiting on? You need to get married. I'm like, I don't want these niggas. And I really tell my mom that, I don't mm -hmm. want these niggas, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and she'd be like, so what you waiting on? I'm waiting on God. And she hates even when I say that. I'm like, if y'all believe in that, I'm like, when, when it's my time, 
And I think the pressure when you are past your 20s or whatever, mm -hmm. I'm 34. Mm -hmm. And I think society puts that pressure on women. Like, why is she not married? Why is she not this? Why is she not <clears throat> that? Why do you think that is? That it's the pressure of society and family. Yeah. You hear a lot of women's mothers that be like, when are you getting married? Yeah, what when are you, you going to do on? this? When are you going to do that? Where do you think that comes from? I just think it's the way they were brought up. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Um, where I'm from, you got married young. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if you reach your puberty, like you 13, you didn't mm -hmm. got your cycle, we got to get her married because they don't want you to be outside. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that's what it is. So it's just like, what is she waiting on, you yeah. know? And I guess for them, it's more so like, let me protect her, you know, while she's young, go ahead, get her married. And it was just a religion, you know, the whole religion thing where when you're married, you're safe. Yeah. Okay. So sense? security. I, yeah, that makes sense. The yeah. security aspect. I think the timing aspect is serious as well. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of women do say I'm waiting, whatever may have you. And their mom may be like, well, time is of the essence. Let's let's exactly. just be honest that's what, about it. Yeah, that's like, what my mom says. Yeah, like, like with women, it's different as compared to men. We can reproduce yeah. shit. Didn't Robert De Niro just have a kid and he's like 80 something? Exactly. We can reproduce whenever. I know, I don't know the exact time with women, but it's different. Y'all don't have as long uh, of a time frame to reproduce. And I think that's another thing that's taken Yeah, that plays, really you know, well. a big factor. But it, to me, I look at it like, who are you to tell God, oh, you know, when, when, sure, what was Janet Jackson had, what, a kid at 50 or whatever? Yeah, she was like in her 50s, but I, I mean, I know it's the complications that come to, to it. Yeah, that. it comes complications to it, but it may not be in your destiny. You know, that's how I look at it. It may not be in your destiny as much as you want it. It may not be. I could, I could want marriage so bad, but guess what? God might say, you know what? No. Nah. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get married. And I tell that to my mom. I'm like, if it's not, you know what I'm saying, for me, I'm not going to get married or I'm not going to be with someone just to say it has Just cause. Because it's a lot, I see a lot of miserable marriages. I yeah. see a lot of miserable relationships. I am okay with being single. I actually love being single. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do want marriage, but I love being single. So I saw a tweet from a woman that said, women in their 30s and plus that say they like being single are lying and deep down inside they really want to be with a man. What did I just say though? I I love being single meaning I enjoy like I said my solitude and everything, but mm. I do want marriage. Okay. I I never I would never deny that. Like mm. I think we are brought on this earth. Men and women are brought on this earth to need each other. Yeah. We're and, relationship creatures. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, God didn't create men and women just for us to be chilling by ourselves. Right. But it has to serve a purpose. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It has to serve a purpose. And if it doesn't serve a purpose for me, why am I going to just say, oh, I want to be with this person? I want to. I see women that are married, have kids, and, this, and they're still doing manly duties. You know, like, why are you putting us this up? Or why are you doing that? Or why are you go? You know, it's just, I don't know. I think I'm still old school with it. Like, I still expect a man to do certain things. Or if you're in a household with, if I'm in a household with my husband, I don't expect to do certain things. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here. I don't care if I know how to do handiwork. I'm not going to do handiwork. And I see women that are do that and they live in a, in a house with a man. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Like I said, I'm, maybe I'm just old school and I still like, I don't care how independent I am. I still expect a man to be a man and play his certain role because as a, as a woman, I'm still going to you know be that nurturer and I'm going to play that role no matter how independent I am. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know, but it just don't make sense to me. It don't make sense. So you have to make it make sense before yeah, you- Yeah, everything got to make it make sense to me. Yeah. And it has to serve a purpose. I'm not yeah. just going to be with someone. I'd rather be alone. You know, nah, I'd rather be I, single. I, it's I, less stressful. I, I definitely agree with that as far as it has to make sense. Yeah. Do you, do you want to get married? Yeah. Uh, I don't know yet. I don't know about marriage. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. I really, like right now- I can see it going either way. I can either see myself being a bachelor for the rest of my life, or I can see myself getting married and starting a tradition and family. I don't, but I haven't put energy towards which one I really want to settle on. That's what I was going to say. Um, you have to give, and I think that's why relationships don't work nowadays, because you have to give a relationship. And I get what you're saying. You know, you, you can't give that 100% that energy, but 
when you give someone, you know, that a little bit of that energy, you you don't know what you're going to get back. You get what I'm saying? A little bit of what energy? Like just giving her the time and the space or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like that quality, quality time can mean anything. You know, I don't know her personally, but for me, if you're like, you're busy, whatever, I'm going to, she, she could come over here and cook, cook for you. Mm -hmm. That's quality time while you, you know, you relaxing, getting your mind right. She cooking for you. But I don't relax is what I'm telling you. I know this that sounds- That will help you I though. I know this sounds crazy, but- I, I I don't and you know I can, I just can't imagine a woman that's like okay I'll get one hour out the week no because then that leads her want to get that attention I know women love attention y'all like attention I mean, so if I can't give you any attention then what you gonna do get the attention from someone that's else that's crazy yeah but that's crazy you can't give a woman no it's, right now it's no busy it is what it man. is it, and I under, an and I understand that it's not an excuse and it is an excuse no, no, because no, no, it's no, no. people that work. Six, it's 24 hours in a day, right? Mm -hmm. I know people that will work 16, 18 hours. Mm -hmm. And still you'll be able to text. You'll be able to... You mean to tell me you work seven days a week. Mm -hmm. I do. If I, take, if I take one day out of the week off, then I'm backtrack a lot. I'm telling you, everything is done by me. Everything I, from I top to been, bottom. I've been there. I've mm -hmm. been there. But I make time for what I want to make time for. And I, But I, I'm, I see this being selfless. If I'm like, yo, yeah, I know yeah. you want time, I know you want attention, I'll try to take, I'll try to compromise, take away from what I know I have to give myself and give it to you. But you're also I, com you're also compromising what you also want because you did say you want a relationship. Yeah, but I know I can't have it right now. I don't care about what I want. Okay. I want a lot of things okay. that I know I can't afford to okay. have right now. Okay. So once I know I'll be able to really give, I want it when I'm able to give it what I want to give to it. Wait, when you're fifty. Nah, I'm only, I'm only, like I said. Because that's what you men wait on when you're nah, like 50 years old. I don't know okay. when that will be. I really don't know. You, then you be like, okay, I'm ready to settle down. I'm not even, but the thing is, I'm not even thinking about it. Because I'm just so focused on doing what I got to do and grinding. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. There's yeah. nothing wrong, um, you know, with being focused on your grind. But yeah. it's just like, what is, what is your, um, your goal? One, you know, now you're focused on your career. You got this, you got that. Gone. You mm -hmm. you barely get time to rest or whatever. Mm -hmm. What is your ultimate goal that you're trying to get out of that? Are you asking me personally what my goal is? Yeah, because I mean, because a relationship, you know, you say your ultimate goal might be marriage, right? Wait, are you so talking you, about relationship? What's my ultimate goal? No, your your ultimate goal with everything that's keeping your yeah. time now, like that's taking your time away. Oh. Because it's like, why are you so invested into this that you, you're saying, I can't give nobody else no time because yeah. this is what I'm so invested into. Right. What is my ultimate goal? Yeah. To create something that is much bigger than me and that will allow me to do the things I want. It will allow me to get the time back and okay. the money back. Okay. To where I can afford to do what I want when I want. Now, that's not to say I'm going to just be living lavish and kicking my feet up on the beach. Cause even when I'm at that point, money wise, I'm gonna still be grinding. Yeah. But I know I'll be able to give more time towards something or someone else. If that makes sense. No, it as far as a particular thing, I mean if I want to get like very, very particular, my own network. Okay. If I want to get like very particular, like I said, sports and entertainment, my own network that brings both you of those still together. Be busy then. Yeah. So you so you're never going to have time. I'll be you gotta make time. Well I'll be busy then, but I'll at least have money to make up for the time. Like I can't, like, okay. uh, uh, like if I was able to afford to pay an editor two hundred dollars per episode, which is eight hundred dollars uh, a month just for editing, I would. I could do that, but I'll be even uh, 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 more time spent trying to get that money back. Right. I'd rather just stack what I can to the point where I can invest it in other things in the long run. Right. I just see that as a short. And AI, I've been I've been tapping into some AI shit that's been giving me time back lately. Yeah, and I'm just be honest, I see what you're saying because yeah. really, when I think about it, I was like, damn, maybe I could have. You know what listen, I mean? Listen, I could have. It's 24 hours in a day. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah. It's 24 I, I, hours in a day, and I'm a busy person. Like mm -hmm. for real, like I might say I'm off today type thing, mm -hmm. but I'm still doing shit. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? I'm still yeah. doing so much. But if I make plans prior to. I'm going to be outside with you. Like, one of my girlfriends, we have to make a date for mm -hmm. this month. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to, like, I'm going to give you X, Y, and Z time yeah. on the tw 20 whatever. Yeah. But 
I can't just make time every single day. Yeah, you know I for saying? sure could have some way, somehow, but... It's, if I, she's the one, especially if you see something with her. I feel like as don't, far as the don't one, push it away. Yeah, nah, I don't I don't know. The one, I don't know about and all don't, that. I mean, well, don't... Pa- I'm, let me put it like this. Don't put a pause into a relationship or even... Because a woman who does like you back, she's going to be understanding. Mm-hmm. And you, I feel like you just got to find somebody that aligns with you or understands your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Because if she understands your lifestyle, you know what I'm saying, she's she's willing to compromise certain things and know like, okay, out of, you know, seven days a week, I might be able to get an hour with him for one day. Mm-hmm. I've dealt with men that are, I mean, like business owners and, you know, I understand, you know, their lifestyle. It was a guy I was dating and literally I probably saw him once a month. Mm-hmm. I kid you not. Yeah. And um, I tried not to nag him, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, because I knew just being an entrepreneur myself, like. And you, Someday, were, and you were cool with that? I wasn't cool with that, but that was a compromise I was willing to make because I understood what he was, where he was trying to go. Mm-hmm. And I only, only reason I understood that because I've been in his shoes. Mm-hmm. Where sometimes, you know, I would tell a guy, I, I, I'm busy, I'm this, I'm that. Because I just want to go lay down for a second. I don't want to talk to nobody. Mm-hmm. I'm tired. Like, I can't give you the time or the space or the energy. Yeah. But if I knew certain things, I'll make that time. Yeah. It may not be tomorrow because you want to see me tomorrow. And even then, I've I've had guys where we might see each other for 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I was so appreciative of that because out of your busy day, your busy schedule, mm-hmm. you found 15 minutes to just come give me a hug. Yeah. That's you know, it just, I mean, it just yeah, depends not, on what you. Yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying and that's what's up. Um, Maybe one day. So then I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm chilling. Well, take that into consideration. <laughs> yeah, nah, if nah, you, you, you if point. you find a young lady that you know you find very attractive and you see it going somewhere up I think outside I'm also, of a I think situation, I'm also, I think I'm also afraid to fall in love as well. I think that's a big thing. That's but, a lot of men. Yeah, because y'all, it is what it is. I don't know what it. Why is that? What's wrong with love? Listen, I this, think love this is a beautiful isn't about thing. me. This this is about you. Okay, this well, is ask about me being you on haven't been asking the me pop nothing. the balloon thing. Go ahead. No, I, I'm just saying we we I'm, I just did that to deflect. To oh, you were trying me. to change the subject. Yeah, I was, I was, I was just playing. I was on your ass. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just playing. What did you? I was ask? trying to help the young lady. What, wherever she at, you know. Nah, that's with me. Once <laughs> I make my bed, I lay in it. It's okay. it's over okay. with. I don't I don't spend the block. It's well back to me. Yeah, back to me. What you want to yeah. ask me? Um. Well, that was that was it. Really, I I was just I was just bullshit when I said that. But now nah, we got a lot out of this because we did hit our time mark. Um, nah, this was dope. Oh, damn. Like, it's time. You know how long we've been recording? You know how long we've been recording? I bet. I, I, bet I told you, you I talk a lot. I know, which is dope. <laughs> guess how long we've been recording for. You won't even guess. Podcast, Hello. Podcasts go by quick. Just guess. Don't look at your phone. Just guess. An hour? Uh-uh. Two hours? Yeah. Nah, I'm playing. It's been an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. But podcasts be going by quick. Do like, you think we got enough stuff, though? Yeah, I think we do. You sure? I usually record for an hour. Oh, so you want to keep going? Listen, we, if, no, you you record for an hour, like, and you just stop there, or yeah, I usually like stop like an hour, hour so I, ten, I, maybe I, hour fifteen. I went past your hour. But it's not a bad thing because you've been. I'm dope. like, look, am I talking too much? You nah, can tell me, like, okay, wrap it up. It's so much better to have someone here that talks too much rather than someone that talks <laughs> that too don't little. Talk. That is the I, worst. But I warned you though, did I not? Like, I am. That a, you talk people, a lot. I like but, it. But that's what people are like. When you gonna start your podcast? When you gonna? Because it just, well, let's talk about that. Um. When are you going to start your podcast? What is it going to be called and what is it going to be about? It's going, um, my podcast is going to be called Pretty Paid and Purposeful. That is my brand um, that I told you earlier about the um, rebranding, mm-hmm. but also putting everything under right, one umbrella. Right. Because I do event planning, I do interior decorating, I do so much. Yeah. Um, and Pretty Paid and Purposeful was just something that, you know, it described not only me, mm-hmm. but I also knew there's a lot of women that are like me. So it will be an interview podcast? You would bring other women on or would it be a solo? Yeah. Well, it's going to be some solos and some interviews. Um, is I want it to be more like an empowerment event, like kind of um, going off of my events because I used to do like empowerment brunches, mm-hmm. empowerment events for women, all women. Mm-hmm. Um, so just kind of making it a podcast, just kind of pouring back into women, whether okay. it's, you know, um, we're having a discussion about, you know, just women's struggles different yeah. things having resources yeah. or just uplifting you know what i'm saying right. other women and where can i help you help me help us type yeah. like if, if my guest came on i'm not gonna come on here like how your podcast is like real chill mm-hmm. you know like we talk about whatever it will be more so inspiring type of podcast. it will be focused towards yeah, a certain towards element like, which i honestly i think is good i think it's 
like, cause I I, I kind of have like an in, internal battle with myself sometimes. Like, yo, what the like? Cause when people ask what my podcast is about, I can't give them an answer. Yeah, and that's even when I ask, I'm like, yeah, we're gonna be all over the place. Yeah. like how we were just right, right now, like right. it's all over the place, like. Right. And I think for me, it was like I'm more structured. Then it helped you also eliminate the type of people you bring. That's on. what I was you know going to well, Not only that, your target audience. Exactly. Because even though I think it's good that I, and people tell me like, nah, keep it how it is because, you know, you can, it shows your diversity and range with people when y'all talk, which I like, which I think is dope, but I still be having this battle. Like, yo, I, my target audience, I, I don't even, I can't even pinpoint that. But that and that might be what's hindering you and getting to the level you want to it get is. to because you have not mastered your target audience. And that's for me. Like my target mm-hmm. audience is not a specific type, but my target audience is women, right? Empowering women. Boom. Yeah. That, when someone asks what your podcast is about, empowering women. Yeah, but Easy I'm breezy. saying like I know already I'm not catering to men. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm not gonna have a man come on my podcast because what are we talking about? Right then it, it kind of becomes that whole sexist thing. And I think a lot of people have that where it's like a man and woman, you know, yeah. going back and forth. Oh my God. That, because that is draining. Yeah. And that I'm, is... I'm pro women. Like yeah. you see, like sometimes people be like, why are you always bashing men? Yeah. I'm like, I'm not bashing men. I stand for women because I am a woman, you right. know, and I've experienced some of the stuff that other women have experienced. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether it's just traumas, insecurities, whatever it is, we might have the same goals. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to be able to have someone you're relatable to and I feel like women kind of gravitate to women they can you know relate to and I have different you know aspects of my you know myself my life age group whatever because I come from different you know backgrounds and what what's what's going to be the name of this pretty paid and purposeful pretty paid and purposeful triple p all right now let me yeah, tell you PPP. something ppp keep it p let me tell you something Miriam. yep I've had about Five people, five or six people since I've started this podcast that have sat in that chair and told me they were going to start a certain podcast. Not one of them have done it. I, let me tell so you something. I'm going to hold you to this, Miriam. I, I got my logo in there. Only reason why I haven't started is because I am... I'm not pressuring I, you into starting tomorrow. No, I'm just saying I'm, to... I'm rooting for you and I can't wait to see it come to fruition. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, you're going to be the first one to, you know, no, because you're going to help me. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking uh, forward to help, it. So, yeah. We're going to help each other. Yeah. But only reason I haven't, like, started, because, you know, sometimes you get pulled in different directions. And I'm it's not a, a yeah. I'm not a type of person just to do something just to do it. Right. I want to, when I do it, be intentional with it. Which, as a podcaster, I appreciate. Because yeah. people think a podcast is you have two microphones, you're talking to you it, you hit talking. record. No. Boom, I got a podcast. I'm going to put it out. It's what's a the lot. Purpose? It's yeah, a what's lot the purpose? Yeah, what's the purpose? Because it, yeah. that's, and that's how you kind of target your audience. Yeah. Because what is your purpose? Right. And how are these people going to tune in? How yeah. are you... The point of a podcast is not just, oh, let's just have fun. Right. You know, like you said, you want to take this to a different level. Yeah. So what level are you taking it to? Right. What's up, fam? First and foremost, thank you for tuning in to this full interview. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already by clicking on the icon on the screen, or you can check out past interviews by clicking on the playlist on the screen as well for every day-by-day podcast interview that we've done so far. Thanks.